Good morning to all of you. This is Dr. V. Ramana Reddy, working as student professor in the Division of Physics at Department of Science and Humanities in Vignan DMTV University. In this semester, I am going to teach you engineering physics. The engineering physics course is having course code 19 HS113. And in this engineering physics, we have five units. Five units. Name is first one is introduction to solids. Second one is introduction to quantum theory of solids. Third one basics of semiconductor physics. Fourth one electromagnetism and fifth one is optoelectronic devices. These are the five units in this engineering physics course. And first of all, we are going to discuss about the first unit that is introduction to solids. Introduction to solids. And what is the outcome of this unit? That means after completion of the first unit, what and all you are able to understand? That is given by to understand the crystal geometry in terms of crystal planes and depicts. This is the outcome of first unit after completion of the first unit. And outcomes, first one is able to understand different types of bonds in solids. Second one, able to calculate the Miller indices of the planes in solids. And third one, able to understand the point defects in solids. Point defects in solids. And before going to discuss about this first unit, and this first unit is having topics bonding in solids, crystal amorphous solids, lattice points and space lattice, basis, crystal structure, unit cell, primitive unit cell, lattice parameters, crystal systems and previous lattices, packing factor in case of simple cubic, body center cubic and face center cubic, Miller indices, distance of separation between successive planes, X-ray diffraction, Bragg's law, polar crystal method and classification of defects in that we have only point defects. These are the some of the textbooks, standard textbooks referred for this engineering physics course, engineering physics course. And before going to discuss about the first point in this module, I am going to discuss about interatomic and molecular and in this module I am going to discuss about the following contents that is interatomic molecular forces in solids first one second one primary and secondary bonds in solids third one in that primary bond we are going to discuss ionic bond covalent bond and metallic bonds and in the case of secondary bonds we are going to discuss hydrogen and vulnerable bonds and Differences between crystalline and amorphous solids. Crystalline and amorphous solids. These are the contents we are going to discuss about in this module. In this module. And before going to discuss about the bonding in solids, first of all, we are going to discuss how the bonds are formed in a particular solid. What is the reason? To form a bond in solids and first of all why you want to study this introduction to solids why you want to going through this topic introduction to solids basic reason is all of you know about the titanic ship accidents in that case what is what happened is in that crash in the construction of the titanic ship they are using one steel material but that steel material is ductile only up to particular temperature that is up to only particular temperature if the same ship is moving below the temperature then what will happen because of the ductile problem ductile problem there is some cracks 
is cracks is in that seam in that steel because of that water is entered into the ship and total that accident is happen from this we want to learn that one before going to construct or manufacture manufacture before going to construct particular automobile or two wheeler or particular building or anything first of all basic thing is we need to study the properties of that material what you are using for that construction otherwise in the case of for example in the case of automobile automobile you want to construct or you want to manufacture one four wheeler or two wheeler first of all what kind of material you are going to use that you have to study the thoroughly here in this chapter we are going to discuss about the prop we are going to discuss about the how the bonds are forming in particular material why because based on that bonding in solids in that material properties will change chemical properties thermal properties physical properties all these are depends only on the how the structure in that corresponding material what kind of structure is there in that corresponding material and in this module we are going to discuss about the how the bonds are forming how the bonds are forming in the solids before going to discuss about this already you knew about the structure of the atom explained by niels bohr according to bohr's atomic model already you knew electrons are assumed to revolve around the atomic nucleus in discrete orbits and position of any particular electron is more or less well defined in terms of its orbital if n is equal to this electronic this orbital is represented by n small n and n is equal to 1 first state n is equal to 2 second state and n is equal to 3 third state and already you knew about the pauli's exclusive principle that states that each electron state can hold no more than two electrons which must have opposite spins and here example is example here structure of the atom here nucleus is there and electrons revolve around the nucleus in particular orbits this diagram represents the schematic representation of the bohr atom and for example we are considering carbon atom carbon electronic configuration is 6 and six electrons or six neutrons are there all these neutrons inside the atom and all electrons revolve around the nucleus in particular orbits particular discrete orbits this is the structure of the atom according to bohr's model now if i want to move two atoms atom a atom b these two atoms comes close to each other what will happen if the two atoms move away from each other what will happen no there is a possibility to exist two kinds of forces when two atoms comes close to each other or two atoms move away from each other there is a possibility two kinds of forces that may be attractive forces or repulsive forces in the case of attractive forces the two atoms comes together attractive forces at particular position these two atoms comes together then this attractive forces are existing between these two atoms then this these two atoms are separated by some distance this is called as a bond length and when two 
two atoms are moves away from each other then repulsive forces come into play when the solid is compressed and there is a possibility two kind of intermolecular forces that is attractive forces and repulsive forces existing when the two atoms comes close to each other or away from each other now what will happen that is about the forces and what will happen in the case of energies now potential energy is given by here potential energy or stored internal energy in any atom is given by individual energies of the atoms plus individual energies of the atoms plus the inter interaction energy when two atoms can stop moving 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 electron charges two things can happen as the atoms approach each other they can either attract or repel each other potential energy due to attraction is negative potential energy due to attraction is negative potential energy due to repulsion is positive and if the both attractive energies attractive forces repulsive forces are balanced with each other then balance with each other then net force becomes zero net force becomes zero for example this is one atom this is another atom this is one atom this is another atom these two atoms comes close to each other at particular point both attractive forces repulsive forces balance with each other then net force becomes zero net force becomes zero now that here in attractive forces is represented by f sub x a and repulsive force is represented by f sub x r and net force is represented by f sub x n if attractive forces and repulsive forces balance with each other then total force becomes zero that is f a plus f r equal to zero then f n equal to zero now what is the energy equation now up to now we discussed about the forces what is the energy equation already you knew energy is represented by integral of integral f dot dr force into that displacement here en equal to total energy equal to ea plus er ea represents e sub x a represents attractive force attractive energy and e sub x r represents repulsive energy total energy is e sub x n this is the see here interatomic forces interatomic forces are existing interatomic force that is either attractive force or repulsive forces are existing when solids comes to, to together solids comes either close to each other or away from each other then interatomic forces are existing interatomic forces are existing due to this interatomic forces observe here how this interatomic force varies with distance now i am taking two atoms atom a first one is represented by atom a second one is represented by atom b now uh, interatomic forces between these two atoms is given by f equal to a divided by r to the power of m minus b divided by r to the power of n here one condition is always n greater than m n greater than m and here r is the interatomic separation between these two atoms between these two atoms now this diagram represents here how interatomic forces versus interatomic forces versus distance in this diagram here in this diagram all of you observe here in this diagram this dotted green line represents the interatomic forces attractive forces versus interatomic separation and here this down here this this dotted lines represents repulsive forces repulsive forces versus interatomic separation and 
this red color line represents the red color line represents the here red color line represents net force that is fn equal to fa plus fr fa plus fr net force versus interatomic separation observe here observe here all of you observe here when distance r is very very small both are existing that means attractive force repulsive force if the two atoms are near to each other at that position both attractive forces and repulsive forces are existing if the two atoms are away from each other then attractive force and repulsive forces are disappeared and net net force also very very low value here when two atoms separated by here r not is represented two atoms are separated by a distance r not at that place at that position both attractive and repulsive forces are balanced with each other here in this diagram here at line represents and if the two when r equal to r not if you further increasing the interatomic separation between the two atoms what will happen then net attractive force becomes zero net attractive force becomes zero now when the two atoms are balancing both attractive force and repulsive force then these two atoms are separated by some distance that is called as a bond length these two atoms are bonding with each other and this distance is called as bond length this distance is called as bond length now this is the reason why the bonds are forming in solids this is the reason why bonds are forming in solids now if the two atoms for example two atoms both in the case of both the atoms attractive force and repulsive force balance with each other then the two atoms are forming a bond between these two atoms and this separation between after forming the bond separation between these two atoms some distance separated by some distance both atom a and atom b this bonding this length is called as a bonding length bonding length this is the reason how the bonds are forming in solids bonds are forming in the case of solids